This video would not have been possible without the due diligence and extreme dedication of the YouTube channel Damn Fool Idealistic Crusader. This guy is the ultimate source, the determined wealth of knowledge about physical media, physical media situations and conditions, different versions of different movies on different formats, what the best format is to watch each movie on. It's an amazing channel for anybody who loves movies, who loves media, and who loves physical media collecting. Had it not been for him, this video would not be getting made, and I might have lost some very cherished items in my film library. When it comes to movies on physical media, I was always that kid. I was the guy that asked for a Laserdisc player for Christmas in high school when everybody else was asking for a cool pair of jeans or, you know, the latest fashion trend or whatever it was. I was the one who wanted the widescreen movies, the better sound, the bigger screen. That was my whole bend. I was even the guy who jumped into HD DVD while HD DVD and Blu-ray were duking it out because I thought, well, maybe HD DVD being part of an evolutionary standard was going to be the better play. Turned out not to be the better play, and fortunately Blu-ray dominated for a really long time. Now that being said, I'm going to confess here, I was never a huge fan of DVD. I was from the Laserdisc generation, and as Kevin Smith famously said at the start of his Laserdisc commentary for Chasing Amy, F DVD, because at the time when DVD was new, it was garbage. And as somebody who had already ascended from VHS to Laserdisc many years before others who were jumping from VHS to DVD, they never got into the Laserdisc game, I was not impressed with DVD at first. Uh, it, it did get better, and it became the de facto format, especially as Laserdisc rapidly phased out. So DVD needed to get better, or else I was going to be stuck. And uh, I was still never a big fan of DVD because DVD was, at first, not good picture quality. Uh, and secondly, it was very easily damaged. Laserdisc has the infamous rot. I was very familiar with this growing up. It became a known thing in our household that we would no longer buy Columbia TriStar Laserdiscs because all of them rotted while we owned them the first few years. And they were all films from Columbia TriStar. So we saw the pattern and we said, you know what? No more Columbia TriStar Laserdiscs in our house. We're just not going to do it. And that served us well for a while. DVD was supposed to be a more robust format. It was supposed to be the one that, like CDs, was going to take care of you if you took care of it. And because CDs and DVDs were the same size and used the same general manufacturing process, we thought they would have it down, so to speak. And the most prolific DVD manufacturer, the biggest supporter in the space at the time, was Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers was putting out more catalog titles and classics than any other studio. The other studios, when they finally caught on, they were racing to catch up and they never quite caught up with Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers opened the floodgates of their archive to the public. And we were all very grateful. And not just movies, but television shows, cartoons, they were doing it all. And we thought, man, this is great. We finally have these really nice quality archival mediumed packages, really nice packages, for some of our favorite television shows and cartoons and movies that we thought might never get prestige releases. And I collected up a bunch of them. A bunch of them. But I should have seen the writing on the wall with Warner Brothers. Um, Warner Brothers was a little quirky in the DVD space compared to other companies. While other companies used the traditional uh, gray cases like this one. Uh, this is a Warner Brothers disc, but this is a later disc. You know, the standard just gray snap case. The early days of Warner Brothers were these kind of cases where they would have the little snappy snap thing with the cardboard, you know, that kind of thing. They were an outlier in that regard. And while their packaging was cheap, they generally had good special features, nice transfers, they were bringing out interesting stuff. 
But that corner cut would herald what I've recently learned is now an epidemic problem with Warner Brothers DVD media. And I want to be clear, DVD, as I said, I never really liked it because as someone who collected it a lot more than other people at the time, because I was a movie collector, I ran into more bum discs than other people right at purchase. In other words, these were all ones that just had a mastering glitch or an error that made the disc unplayable. You'd take it back, you'd swap it out, but it was still a headache. And I thought to myself, man, like this is not a problem that I've had with any of my audio CDs going all the way back to the, the late 80s. I, I don't have this problem with my laser discs now that I figured out that Columbia TriStar is garbage. Uh, this is This is weird. So I always saw DVDs as fragile, and I always took immaculate care of my discs. I didn't touch them with my fingertips. I always kept them in cool, dry environments. I always put them right back in their cases. I didn't use them as coasters. I took care of my purchases, and I thought, well, if I take care of them, they'll take care of me. But I've learned, as of just about two weeks ago, that... The Warner Brothers library um, of DVD, not Blu-ray. Uh, there are Blu-rays that can have mastering errors and go bad. Look, free advice. Don't ever buy a Rambo movie on any format. Any format, except maybe the latest 4K. And even that, I'm crossing my fingers. Every Rambo film, and these aren't Warner Brothers, but every Rambo film I've bought on DVD and Blu-ray in multiple versions, they all rot. They all go bad within several years. They all become glitchy and unplayable. I don't know why. I don't know what mastering house the IP owner for Rambo has decided they want to use and ride or die, um, but it's a horrible place where they're making those discs. The Rambo 4Ks, I'm hoping, are going to be all right. But yeah, Rambo, as an example, is one of the only movies that's moved from glitchy DVDs to Blu-ray and ended up being equally glitchy. Now, I'm sure there are other tales of certain Blu-ray titles or even uh, companies using certain Blu-ray factories that have really crapped the bed, but Blu-ray is a far more robust format than DVD. You know, Blu-ray has the, the added scratch protection. They're... Uh, they're better encoded. They've obviously got better picture quality. But you don't hear the stories about Blu-ray that I'm about to tell you about Warner Brothers and their DVD products. Barring Rambo. Rambo on DVD and Blu-ray is horrible. Like, horrible. So you might have seen a few weeks ago, I did that video recommending my favorite B-17 movies in the wake of the popularity of Masters of the Air. And at the time I was putting that video together, I did need access to one more movie, which was Clark Gable's Command Decision. I did not have that film, and I wanted to mention it, but it was only ever available on DVD. It had never been brought out on Blu-ray. I thought, okay, no problem. So I go onto the internet and I look it up, and to my shock, I find that it's out of print. Um, but not only is it out of print, it's going for a lot of money which was weird to me because it's not a very well-known title these days. It's a black and white movie from 1948. And I thought, huh, that's weird. But then I kept seeing it popping up in this box set called Heroes Fight for Freedom, Volume 2, World War II Collection, Volume 2, Heroes Fight for Freedom. And it was a Warner Brothers box set. It had five movies in it, uh, two of which uh, I already owned. Um, but... I was able to get a sealed copy of this box set for 30 bucks versus paying sometimes upwards of $85 for a single copy of Command Decision. And they were visually identical. And I thought, huh, well, maybe, maybe this is just like a, an auction that slipped through the cracks. I'll pick this up. So I picked it up, uh, grabbed the disc out of here. Here's the, here's the Command Decision disc right here. This is Command Decision, and brand new, never been played. Uh, I put it into my drive to uh, rip the disc so that I could pull some clips for the video, and it was toast. This disc was dead as a doornail. It wouldn't read. It was throwing errors. I was like, wow, that's weird. 
Well, it just so happened there was another movie in the set, like I mentioned, that I own. That movie is Air Force. I'm going to switch hands here. That movie is Air Force, uh, the Howard Hawks film that I mentioned. This is the one that came out of the box set. I didn't want to run upstairs and get my copy of Air Force if I didn't have to. So I thought, well, while I'm down here, I'll throw in this um, and get it ripping so that I don't have to go upstairs and get my copy because I bought this on DVD on its own years ago, back when I was in grad school. Well, this thing was toast, throwing errors, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't rip, it wouldn't read. And that's when I really got paranoid, so I raced upstairs and I grabbed my copy of Air Force. Yeah, you can't tell them apart, can you? This one was sold individually. If you look at the ISBN numbers, they are identical. And I thought, oh my God, is this disc rotten just like this one is? Well, I put it in, it, it, it loaded up, no problem. It was able to rip and I was able to get all the clips I needed for the video. And I thought, what is going on here? The only way you'd be able to tell in this particular instance is that this single packed version that I bought has that, that cutout, that recycling cutout. And the one for the box set don't have that. Otherwise, the discs look identical, the, the, uh, the UPC code is the same, or, or ISBN number, I should say, and the, USB, uh, and the uh, UPC code. Um, so I started trying every single movie in this set. They're all dead. They're all toast. They don't work. And this, this box set was sealed. So I immediately reached out to my friend Chronically because he and I talk physical media all the time. And Chronically knew the guy at Damn Fool Idealistic Crusader. And he raced off and, and they were chatting about it a little bit. He went out to get extra information after he dropped the bombshell on me because he already knew about this. Um, and it's apparently been known in certain circles for a long time. Most of your Warner Brothers DVD box sets, television show season sets, and a handful of single-packed individual movies, like, in other words, uh, one of the examples is a special edition of Dog Day Afternoon, which you can see a description about with that problem over on uh, Damn Fool Idealistic Crusader. Uh, they were all pressed, all these discs were pressed, at some sort of manufacturing plant here in the United States, I think in Pennsylvania or something like that. And uh, they were all done poorly. Uh, the factory didn't, didn't do it right. The factory was cutting corners using the wrong materials and they basically made, um, they basically made matchbook grenades out of them. They, they, they all go bad. They, they, they curdle like milk. So I found a link on Damn Fool Idealistic Crusaders uh, video in the description that goes to a master list of sets with known problems. And I was reading this list and it just blew my mind the number of things that were in my collection that were apparently going to rot even if you never watched them. If they were from between the years of 2006 to around 2009, you had ticking time bombs of investment that was just going to go belly up. And the reason that I bring this up in this video, because a lot of you are like, that's why I do streaming, blah, blah, blah. Well, the top of this set and many others say, like this one says it, this says DC Comics Classic Collection. All right. Collection. These were supposed to be premium packaged volumes on archival media formats by and large they're not going to last forever but they certainly were supposed to last a lot longer than these have um, so that you could have a library of content throughout your life that's the tacit pledge or promise between the media producer on disc media and the consumer we have improved these formats and 
It will always play great, unlike VHS. Every time you play it, it will look amazing. And yes, eventually, you know, occasionally you will have a disc that has a mastering error from the factory, but you know, that'll get replaced immediately. But they never said that once discs are proven to play well, that there was going to be as much of a problem as there was with Laserdisc. And as we're finding with Warner Brothers, they have surpassed Laserdisc with their problems. Um, this is the uh, Jimmy Stewart Signature Collection. As you guys know who watch the channel, I'm a huge fan of Jimmy Stewart. I love his movies. I've tried to collect as many of them as I could. Um, this set is one of the problem children. And while I've watched every movie in this set at one time or another, I'm pretty sure at this point if I broke them out now and looked at them, that, uh, and you can't judge by eye all the time. Sometimes you can tell that the silver playing surface has gone like urine yellow or kind of a bronzy color. That's usually your first indicator that it's turning or has turned and rotted. But sometimes there's no indication. Sometimes you put it in and you find out the hard way. Um, I very much expect that these films have all gone belly up. The only saving grace in this case is that many of these films have been re-released by the Warner Archive Collection, some of them even on Blu-ray. So, for example, I have The Naked Spur on Blu-ray, which is the major one um, that I would have been concerned about in this set uh, for myself personally. Um, but that can't be said for other sets. So, like Command Decision... Um, it was never re-released on the Archive Collection, on DVD, or any other format. So if you don't have that original single release, um, you're stuck with hoping that a second-hand single release is not just one from the rotting box set pulled out and sold singly for a profit to swindle you. You see how these start to fall into these patterns and problems? Warner Brothers has rooked us as movie collectors. They have been negligent in their responsibility, uh, and we have invested in them through good faith. And now you have all of these films that, that are on DVD that are just dying on the vine. Um, I, am a, I am a huge Superman collector, as far as the media of Superman, not the comic books. I do collect some of the comics, that's not important. Um, but my goal was to collect the television shows, the cartoons, the movies. Pretty much everything, everything that involves Superman on DVD rots. This is uh, season four of Lois and Clark. I bought all these brand new, as you can see, and I bought them at the time they came out. And as you can see, they are in pristine condition because I take care of my stuff. Um, Lois and Clark season four has been designated as one that rots. Um, however, it's possible that that's the only one that's been caught so far. It may very well be likely that some of the other seasons will rot in time as well. This is the last season of the show. I dodged a bullet on this one. Had I not backed those up to help out my friend, and I, I don't delete things once I back them up, I would have lost this box set because I guarantee you this box set is probably rotted now with discs that don't work. Fortunately, I backed them up, but all the other Superman stuff that I've collected was on the hit list as well. The Kirk Allen theatrical movie serials from the 1940s, which I had the original release of. Fortunately, even though my discs checked out okay and I backed them up onto a hard drive, uh, that set has been uh, reissued by the Warner Archive Collection, so you can still get it as sort of manufacture on demand. Super Friends. The Super Friends sets are in really bad shape. And you might recall, I did an entire video unspooling the chaos that is the Warner Brothers Super Friends DVD sets to organize them for everybody so you know which ones you need to get and what seasons they are, etc. Well... The ones they cited were the all-new Super Friends Hour on the list, and I had both of those. Well, I checked them out, and the discs looked like they were starting to turn piss color. So I was like, oh, crap. So I threw them into the, the, the drive, and I ripped them to ISOs, and miraculously, they didn't throw any errors, and they all ripped just fine. However, one that wasn't on the list, these are the two original releases 
of Super Friends. This is Challenge of the Super Friends and Super Friends Volume 2. So my next target, after ripping all new Super Friends Hour Volume 1 and 2, because even though it was only Volume 1 that was on the list, I ran and grabbed Volume 2 and did it as well. These two were the oldest. These are the, these are the oldest ones. So I thought, okay, what I'll do is I will rip these next. Challenge of the Super Friends ripped just fine. All new Super Friends, disc two is toast. Once again, I may have dodged a bullet because this particular set was re-released later after 2009 on DVD again. So I'm gonna have to go pick that up and get that back. But it doesn't always work out that way. Like right now, for example, uh, my friend Scott Hughes let me borrow the Flash uh, TV series on DVD. This set uh, is on the list. Now, at first I panicked about that because I thought, oh God, how long has it been since Scott has watched his set? What if I put these in and they don't play? I would hate that for Scott. Well, because this is in a, a plastic snap case and it's got a date of 2010 on the back, this may be a repackage of the original set. Because um, the original set more than likely would have come in a cardboard slip case, like most Warner Brothers shows did back then. So I'm hoping beyond hope, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna check these, these discs, but I'm hoping beyond hope that because this is a reissue, these discs will be fine. But not all series have gotten re-releases. And one of the ones that was on the list, so like for just as another example of a reissue, uh, right here we have, I have all these discs laid out to show you. Right here we have uh, the Wonder Woman sets. These are the original Wonder Woman television show sets. Bought them new, kept them pristine, kept them nice, everything like that. But they're on the list as these things are going to fail and rot. Now, I always thought that these had a fail rate because they had the flipper discs, you know, the ones where the early DVDs, sometimes they would do that flipper thing where both sides would play, but they had a high fail rate. Mine always played fine for the most part, but they were starting to get a little twitchy in, in, in certain episodes. So I had always planned to buy the reissue on DVD, which they had come out with around the time that the Snyderverse launched or something like that in theaters. But I waited too long, and nothing bad happened. I waited so long that they brought them out on Blu-ray. So I now have the Blu-ray set for the entire Wonder Woman collection, so I'm not as concerned about these discs now, because um, I, I now have this in, in high def, which is, which is great. Assuming there aren't any horrendous content errors like there are with the Max Fleischer cartoons. But otherwise, these are in... These are in good shape, backed up on high def. What hasn't been backed up are the George Reeves Adventures of Superman television shows, which I had every single volume of. Pristine. Seasons 5 and 6 were on the list of discs that rot. My season 5 and 6 was still in the shrink wrap with the price tag on it. I had never gotten around yet to watching it. So I pulled the set out immediately, ripped the shrink wrap off, and threw it into the player. Of the five discs that are in here, my computer indicated that discs two and four are toast. Never watched, never enjoyed, never abused, but they're dead. Quite unfortunate. And the double smack in the face is... This set has never been reissued on DVD, nor has it been upgraded to Blu-ray. So there's no way for me to easily get this set back. Now, you might say, well, you can just buy another one on eBay. But it's another one of the same sets. So its fail rate is equally high. Meaning that there's no guarantee if I buy another one used or brand new unused, that it won't have rotted in the same discs, same spots, even more discs. I could end up with one of those World War II sets again where every disc doesn't work. So that would be throwing good money after bad. 
So we're in a real jam here with Warner Brothers, and it's not just Superman and DC Comics stuff. Like I said, the list is endless. It involves tons of not-so-old uh, films and a lot of old classics, like the Jimmy Stewart Signature Collection, the Errol Flynn Collections, multiple multi-movie sets, um, World War II Collections. The list goes on and on and on, and there's a lot of them up there in my collection as well many of which have not yet been reissued by the Warner Archive Collection or even upgraded to Blu-ray. Some of them have been reissued by the Archive Collection, but they're still DVD, like the Sean Connery war film The Hill. But it's not been upgraded to Blu-ray, so there's reticence on my part to jump into a DVD of it when there might be a Blu-ray around the corner. Or then again, there might not, and I lose out. All that to say... If you have cherished library discs of whatever you like that happen to be Warner Brothers, you need to go to Damn Fool Idealistic Crusader at the link in the video description below to the video that I've linked to. And in his description will be the information along with the Google Docs and everything that will tell you what's on the two master lists, both the list from things he's found in his collection as well as the lists he's compiled from message board discussions on Home Theater Forum, High Def Digest, Blu-ray.com, all these different um, uh, channels where home, home media collectors are talking about the fail rate of Warner Brothers DVDs. And then I would highly encourage you, regardless of what that, that FBI warning says, I would highly encourage you, since Warner Brothers has left us in the trenches with grenades, truly, with our home media, because this represents hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of purchases over the years in good faith. I don't want to have to track it down and buy it again on streaming because I already bought it once. And on streaming, most of these things are still in standard def anyway. So you're, you're, you're not getting a better presentation. You're getting a worse presentation because it's compressed over streaming. So it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. But I would highly encourage you to run over to Damn Fool Idealistic Crusader and check this list. And you, when you find something on this list that you own that you cherish and you want to keep that isn't available for an upgrade, if you have the ability to get, you know, DVD decryptor or DVD fab or something like that, you need to throw those discs in and back them up for yourself as ISOs, as disc images. And that might sound like a ballsy thing to say out loud on a YouTube video where all this copyright stuff and everything's going on, but here's the deal. This wouldn't be necessary, and I wouldn't have had to do this if Warner Brothers had kept their quality control in check at the time they were making these. This isn't an isolated incident with one or two titles. They leaned on this factory for a huge amount of product. They had to have known at some point that there was a problem. They had to have known. And they just let it ride. And that's, that is a, uh, that is a breach of the, the tacit promise between the consumer and the manufacturer. A life of excellence is a boring life. <laughs> um, I think we also need just comforting mediocrity. Warner Brothers needs to get a master list of all of the titles. I mean, all of the titles that were made at that factory. And I don't care if they were duplicated elsewhere like Air Force was uh, or Command Decision got a single release once. They need to get a master list of every title that was ever included in any box set or television show or single movie that was at that factory. And they need to open up the Warner Archive collection to allow them to make those discs again available to people. Ideally, what they would do is then provide people who can prove ownership of these of these sets and then they can get the discs sent to them because we don't want to give up the packaging we just need new discs even if they are manufacturer on demand it's better than where we are now anything can improve the position that we're in right now with warner brothers and their dvd media now i'm glad to report that by and large uh warner brothers discs after 2010 on dvd don't have this problem um as an example, one of the sets that's uh, problematic that's on the list is Dukes of Hazard. All the season sets that came out originally 
I bought them all as they came out because I wanted the Dukes of Hazard on DVD. A lot of those were flipper discs. Some of them weren't, but even just a few years in, I had to rebuy my second season because the flipper discs just weren't working right. They were glitching. Thankfully, Warner Brothers has re-released that series several times, and the 2017 box set, which I own, which was uh, commonly sold, I think it's still sold at Walmart even to this day, redid the discs. So instead of having them be single-layer flipper discs that have a high fail rate, they put the episodes on dual-layer single-sided discs, which is awesome. Like, that's great. It really helps the longevity of the of the media. And obviously, from what I've been told, they're not using that factory in Pennsylvania anymore, so those discs aren't going to be uh, necessarily a time bomb on your shelf waiting to just go bad. I had bought that... Uh, redone collection set, it's still readily available. I had bought it several years ago um, just to have a backup copy because my discs were glitching out. And at the time I thought this must be because they're flippers, flipper discs. And now I've learned, no, they're also on the hit list because they were probably manufactured at that Pennsylvania factory. And that's not nothing. At the same time, it's not much. Ideally, Warner Brothers would freely replace any titles that you can verify that you own. But at worst, at worst best, it would be nice to know that Warner Brothers has an option for you to rebuy these and not have to go jumping into a secondhand market where all of those other copies are defective as well. You just don't know which defects are going to happen in those. Like, I could go out right now I could go out right now and say, I've got to get this solved. I've got to get discs two and four solved. And I'm working on getting it solved. I'm trying to figure it out. And I don't want streaming copies. I want copies that were off of a disc. The compression and and image quality will be better, even when it's only DVD. Well, I could go out today and spend $175, $200 on three, four sets off eBay in varying claimed conditions. I could get all of them here with the express purpose of just hoping that one of those four to five sets has a working disc two and a working disc four. And there's no guarantee, based on the situation with Warner Brothers, that any of those discs, any of those box sets that I bought secondhand, would have a working disc two or four. The odds are that bad. In fact, given my experience with the World War II collection, the odds are more likely that all of the discs in them have gone bad. And then I would have thrown $200 into the wind because they're not misrepresenting what they're selling. A lot of people don't know about this problem and they're selling secondhand Warner Brothers box sets and movies from around that time period And they probably have really good condition cases and they look nice and they're like, oh, cool. This this is really nice. Awesome. I'll sell this. This is a really nice set for someone to have. Toast. Warner Brothers has... The The disappointment here is that Warner Brothers, back in the 2000s, positioned itself as the champion of catalog titles, preserving the classics, home media. And they did a really good job with both the variety, the availability, and the window dressing of all the packaging. They really were hitting visual home runs back then. I mean, this right here, this is a beautiful case. This is this looks great. These Lois and Clark discs, they look really sharp. I mean, they are really good looking sets. And to know that they were totally turning a blind eye to what their factory was doing um, and not really caring about the longevity and the durability of the end product to this degree is shocking. And now with the current regime at Warner Brothers being run by that corporate thug, David Zaslav, and them gutting Turner Classic Movies and doing all kinds of other shenanigans, the, the the recent awful release of the Max Fleischer cartoons of Superman on Blu-ray. It's not even worth buying. Um, it was notoriously bad. Um, 
Damn Fool Idealistic Crusader did his video on it, but Digital Bits did and, and others, they did content and reviews about how notoriously awful it was, the worst release of 2023. Um, there's no point in buying that. So I have very little hope that at this day and time, the current Warner Brothers has any interest in resolving these problems, has any interest in addressing these issues. They don't want to do that. In other words, the Warner Brothers that we didn't think was making these kinds of DVDs back then is very much now the Warner Brothers that is publicly looking at us in 2024. And with the studio systems melting down anyway with physical media production, sub-licensing it out to better houses, mind you, their, their head is not in the game on this kind of stuff. When the studios do do their own movies these days, rather than, than farm them out to Kino Lorber or Shout Factory or Arrow or Eureka, companies that do good, a good job because they're passionate about movies, on the rare occasions these studios are still making their own titles in-house, the titles end up having quality control problems. These, not just Warner Brothers, but across the different studios. They have quality control problems, uh, the mastering is horrible, the color timing is horrible. There's a higher fail rate with studios doing this work in-house anymore than ever before. Warner Archive Collection does a good job, but they're kind of apart from Warner Studio. My advice to the studios, and Warner, Warner Brothers uh, especially, would be hand over everything, hand over responsibility of everything that's more than five years old. You should make it a corporate policy that any piece of media you own that's over five years old, Warner Brothers, you need to just, by default, let Warner Archive handle the physical media releases of that material. That should be a corporate policy. Your studio, Warner Brothers home video studio people, should not be allowed to touch that material anymore after it's five years old. Because all you've done is butcher that kind of stuff. And in this particular case, you need to give them a master list uh, and permission to distribute and offer anything and everything that was made by that factory from 2006 to 2009. And you know which ones they were. You've got the records. You need to make all those available as manufacture on demand, like overnight, like tomorrow. Now, as far as the other studios go, they don't have the DVD rot legacy that Warner Brothers has now earned. But as far as their media going forward, I think all these studios should just start letting Kino Lorber and Eureka and Arrow and Shout Factory and Criterion and others just do the physical media remastering and distribution of all these catalog titles. I don't think these studios, ha they're not investing in their archivists. They're not investing in their programs anymore. They're all just trying to scrape as much profit as they can as they race down the corporate Wall Street ladder to mediocrity. It's all the same path. Please your shareholders, please your shareholders, please your shareholders. Oh crap, we're bankrupt. How did that happen? because you followed the Wall Street playbook and you pleased your shareholders to the detriment of your actual business of selling good stuff to your actual customers. So maybe what you need to be doing right now is rethinking your entire home media strategy since you don't care about it anyway. You know, Disney has sublet theirs to Sony. All of these companies just need to, to admit they don't have the, the brain trust anymore for it. They've fired all those people. They've brought in a bunch of corporate zeros over the last 15, 20 years. They don't have the intellectual chops anymore for this. And they need to be handing the responsibility for all of this, all of this off to the boutique labels who will actually do a good job. As for Warner Brothers, you guys have face planted horribly with this. And it's, you know, it's come back to bite you. I, 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 would be, I would be kowtowing right now to the consumer on this one. Because you've had a lot of devoted Warner Brothers collectors for a long time that put faith in you. You, you boy, you, you talked a good game in the 2000s. You guys, you really, you really rooked us. You guys were like, 
look at what we're doing. We're, we're, we're all about home media. We're, we're bringing out the, the, the catalog titles. Well, if that was a genuine sentiment back then and not just a carnival barker con, then you need to make good on it. And the, the best way you can make good without losing your shirt in the process, because I know that giving away tens of thousands of freebies is not in your best interest. The best thing you can do is compile a list of all those titles, movie, television, and animation, and get those over to Warner Archive and give them immediate permission to start offering those as manufacture on demand. Now. Because your DVDs might be rotting, but your company is too.